Hey YouTube, so time to start a new series. By demand, without any question, the most demanded videos on the channel are on course. Videos kind of how to play, what to think, pre-shot routine, all those bits and pieces. I've been out there the last couple of weeks grinding away in the wind and having stuff fall over and bought a bunch of kit to try and do on course videos and stuff and have a few clips, but all in all, it's, it's pretty niggly, but I first want to test out the theory here indoors and uh, see what you guys think, if you like it, how it's run, what I'm doing. I really want your feedback and comments on it as um, far as how I explain stuff, flyovers, all those bits and pieces, like what you really want to know with the process of hitting shots and playing and picking targets and stuff, okay? So please smash the comment section more than anything else let me know what you want to see how you want to see it um, don't be too hard on my golf game <laughs> I'm just going to do a little wee warm up and then uh, we'll hop on a virtual course and run you through some stuff and you tell me if this is what you want to see more of thank you <laughs> okay so all warmed up warmed up enough let's uh dive on into the sim golf side of things Whew. and we can explain what we're going to do with the series and uh whatnot let's go somewhere we haven't been before Japan. manchester golf club never played manchester golf club 500 feet above continue this is for guys guests. We're not worried about handicapping today. Tees, that is the back tees, nice and short. And guests, conditions, fixed will make it nice and easy for me as we're trying to explain some stuff. So we're gonna go through every hole, kind of give you some idea of what we're talking about. But again, I need your feedback with regards to what information you really wanna know, whether it's the type of shot I'm playing or Where's a good place to aim or why is that a good play? What percentages should be going at? What flags? All those little bits and pieces that are going to make a huge difference to when you are playing golf to play smarter and hopefully shoot better scores with what you've got, myself included. Probably a very good series for me because, man, I'm far from perfect um, in every aspect. Cool. So what we got here? Got look, we've got a lovely, beautiful... Rolling Hills, Manchester. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. So it's a nice little opening par four. It's only 300 meters, so 330 yards. OB left. Trouble up there. So the first thing one would do um, is in the perfect world, right? You'd have a you have a look at what we got here. So we've got a sweeping par four, uphill, left to right. So clearly, if you can't carry that trap on the left. Don't be trying to. You just play it short right of the trap. You'd bunt it up to the middle of the green and you play golf from there. Now that, obviously this is an interesting scenario here where there's no massive issues. Um, I mean, there's an OB fence way the hell left and there's some trees up here on the right. Now I carry driver somewhere around 245, 250, even into that breeze. I'd certainly, the only downside here is this trap comes in around that 250. So that's no bueno, and I do play fades. I can't reach all the shenanigans way up here on the left, but I'm pretty warmed up now, as we saw a little warm up, so I'm gonna hit driver, take these first traps out of play. It's a back flag, so back flag means the closer I can get to the green, the easier it is to hit like a low driving pitch shot to that. Front flag, I would definitely probably not be hitting driver unless I could knock it on the green, um, because then you, like, especially a front left flag to this hole, um, you just, you wouldn't want to bother. So we'll hit driver again. I'm going to predetermine I'm going to play a fade. Um, why? Because I'm not a huge fan of I'm not a huge fan of quick hooks, <laughs> and I want to have a predictable miss. Again, all under the breeze, but I know I've got that first trap covered. That second trap, um, if it fades a lot or it goes short, it might be in that bunker. But from there, I can just play the middle of the green quite happily. Um, Pretty short routine. Got to make sure my body's still awake from what I just did to it. And then we're good to go, right? All right, so let's hit some shots. 
and uh, get into it. So aiming at the left, I'm just gonna rip it up the left and we'll see where we go. Cool, a little high on the face, the so ball speed's a bit down, a bit toey, so it's shown fade too much. Cool, that's a pretty good one there. Wow, it's exceptional. Can't guarantee they're all gonna be that good, but it's a good start to the round. So, obviously, it makes all golf look a bit too easy, but by whacking it up there, I only hit driver again because there was a back flag, so quite comfortable smacking it all the way up there. 33 meter pitch. Only thing I could really go wrong here is go over the back. So clearly the goal is not to think about going over the back. The key is to use appropriate language to encourage me to basically, I would say the best place to be is 10 foot short. Especially with now, I think I've got auto putt on so I don't have to worry about all that carry on. I'll tell you what, some putting is quite, quite weird. So I instantly get here, lies great, everything's good. Breeze is not a big deal. I'm not sure how quick the greens are. I assume they're probably 10 and it's probably on medium. So I'm gonna to need to try and picture my spot where I wanna land it. Is it gonna be about, in the perfect ball, probably about 25 meters. So any good pre-shot routine for me with pitching is I'm gonna feel how hard it is to carry the golf ball 25 meters. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just trust that feel. Now, with some golf, I find it amazingly interesting to get used to that feel. Oh wow, that's a great outcome. Like there, yeah, carried at 24. Now it's taken some reps and time to get a feeling for that because I've always been just a C player. C, that's my spot, like throwing a, a bit of rubbish in the bin when I'm pitching outside. I don't ever really laser it. Maybe I should start, but from 24 meters, I'll just look and feel and then hit. Whereas playing sim golf has forced me to learn how to actually feel 40 meters of carry or whatever carry distance I'm attempting to do. And then I just base my carry distances pretty much on swing length. For uh, I have it about shaft parallel is about 30 carry, and then it gets to about here, and suddenly it's more around 50 carry, and then there's about 75. So I start to feel that, and then within that range, if it's 24, I'll be like, ah, it's just a little short of 30. It's 52. It's around there. So you start to have some reference points to control your swing speed and thus your carry distance. Obviously, it's all based on a good solid strike, because if you miss hitting it, it's no boiner. All right, next hole, let's see what we have here. A very friendly distance. Oh, it's nice playing, short golf course. So I believe it is a par five, dog leg, left to right. Ah, uh, looks like there's some tree trouble. There's a trap on the right. Oh, some bundai over the back of it. So immediately we have to avoid that trap. Let's have a look skis here. So there's the jungle over here that's right on my carry distance. Ooh, wind into. So I could hit a fairway wood up the left here and only have hybrid in. I could try smoke driver, it's hard. 260 carry to get over that. And the driver actually brings all the bundai into play. So as exciting as it is to hit driver down there through that chute, that's my carry right there, especially into the breeze a little bit. I haven't got 270 carry meters, 300 yard carry. If I did have a 300 yard carry, it would be up here and it gets wide open. So it's a well-designed little golf hole. So I feel like potentially a fairway wood out there and then I'm only gonna have hybrid in. So sometimes hitting less than driver or fatigue or even on a par five is an actual acceptable idea. So tempting just to absolutely smoke a driver down there. But for the purpose of the exercise, let's take fairway wood and uh, try and bunt one up that left center. Attempt to have that golden rule when it comes to course management. And you can, this is not a new idea, it's been around for a minute. Have a defensive target or a smart target and have a cocky swing. Very, very, very important. Don't be having an aggressive target and a defensive swing. If I was to hit driver down there, I'd have to completely accept I could lose my ball left. Not that you ever lose a ball in some golf, but it could disappear left. It could be in the bundai right, and I'm gonna hack and lay out into a, a, a difficult yardage. Whereas here with three wood, I've gotta believe that I can't reach the trap on the right. I can't reach the, the, the 
the trouble on the left. I can easily carry that trap on the left. I can just take this club, put a really confident swing on it, and just stripe it down the middle. I might have the same club in again, or I might have a hybrid in, but I feel like this is the right club. And I have to go through that process of the decision phase to then go to the commitment phase to go, this is perfect. If I didn't feel comfortable with this, hybrid. If I didn't feel comfortable with that, four iron. But let's have a go with this and see what we got. Aim the face first, feet to the face, brilliant. I feel like I've cut that just a touch, but it's all heel strike, get the turn it over. Oh, just talent. Oh, there it is, there's that late bead. So, poor execution of that shot. However, if I had selected driver, with that same swing, would have been in a hag. So, fairway wood was a good play. A little bit defensive with that swing, it wasn't awfully violent, was it? But here we are, pretty much can hit the same shot again if I desire. Second shot really looks quite wide, back flag. So getting it up there is a great idea. I don't really want to leave myself a, a long second putt. Into the breeze, uphill 230. It's going to come quite slow out of that lie. It's pretty simple for me really, I've just got to aim at that left edge of the green and just rip it. The layup. It's quite dangerous, actually. There's a lot of shenanigans going on in that layup zone, so I quite happily aim at the left and just rip it. I think it's the right play. I know I've got the right club, three with three wood, into this little par five. Seems to be the play. Okay, same process again. It's a nice and committed swing. Cool. I felt like it was a pretty good little move. Is it going to fade a little bit? Here it comes. Wow, that's another good outcome. Cool, just chase through the green. No harm, no foul. Very safe way to play that hole. Two, three woods. No dramas at all. Whereas driver would have brought everything into play. Layup would have brought everything into play. Again, know my numbers, so it's okay. Easy chip in real life on the fringe from 10 meters. What are you doing? You're not hitting a chip. You're gonna hit a putt. Always putt first, chip second. Now, some golf putting is pretty entertaining. I won't lie. When you're putting it three meters into a screen and the target itself is actually 10 meters away, it's quite tricky. It's pretty easy to see the read though. It's going from left to right, just the same as when you're reading a green in a golf course. If you were to pour water on the green, Wherever the water's gonna to funnel to is pretty much where the break is. So I'm gonna play a lot of break. <sighs> then a 10 meter putt. Gosh, okay, 10 meters, a little uphill. What does a 10 meter putt feel like? Probably something like that. It's probably about 10 meters of ball speed. Let's give it a go. Same process as my full swing. Aim the face first, commit to that target, and then just let it go. Felt pretty much okay. Maybe a bit firm. Cool, good guess. That was a bit easy. Mm. I can't imagine golf's gonna be this easy all the time, but here it is. Now, are you really learning anything from this? I don't know yet. Next hole. Another par five. What is this? Another short par five, let's check it out though. It looks like it's quite a different kind of a hole. So here we've got a dog leg uphill and then it works to the left downhill. What a cool little golf course. Cool, wow, okay, and you can see it goes down and then it goes back up. Flag is on the front of the green. Cool, all right, excellent. So immediately for me, I carry it around 250 meters, so I can aim it over there, up the left-hand side. You saw where that fairway sloped. So I aim right down the left, and challenge that left-hand side with my fade. You've got to really develop a shot shape that's reliable for T. Um, very hard to know where to aim when you don't know where your golf ball's going to go. So obviously that's a combination of uh, swing technique, and equipment. Um, the only club in the bag I really hit a fade with 
is my driver by choice, triple diamond, set up for a low fade. <laughs> Everything's designed with it to make the golf ball fall to the right if it's gonna go anywhere. Why? Because a fade's a little bit more consistent than a draw, and with the modern driver, you can set it up with the, the weighting in the head to control the spin rate. And remember, basically, the head controls the spin, the shaft launches it. So you get that combo right, you know what you're looking for. You can have a driver that has some level of repeatability with where it's gonna go. All right, so let's do my normal process. Pick my target, precise target. Sort of that tree up the left, this, the trunk of the tree up the left. And I'm gonna go in, run my routine, and just fully commit to ripping it up the left. I repeat the word commit is a massive part of hitting drivers good. Hopefully that fades like it's supposed to. There she comes. I have no problems with a nice little high slice. Good ball speed for a little skinny fella. Stay, stay on top of the hill. Stay, stay. Nope. Wow, it's gone a bit far. Okay, cool, in the rough is what it is. Probably would've been better if I left it up on top, but I'm not gonna know I'm gonna hit it that far all the time. Is what it is. Cool, successful there. So, did the golf ball curve a lot there? Yeah, curved. Oh, good, sort of 25 meters in the air, left to right. I don't mind playing the curve. I don't mind if it does curve too much. I literally would drive it by playing that fade, aim up the left, if it goes straight, fairway. Curves a bit, fairway. If it curves a lot, right edge of the fairway. It's very wide. And as long as you optimize the equipment for launch and spin, like that one launched at 11, spun at 2.2, two, it's great. You can live with that, right? And also a driver, because you're starting to go up, it's so much easier to swing left and hit that fade. I mean, they can hit the driver with a draw, but then the swing direction has to get so far right to hit up and right. No, it's not talented enough for all that carry on. Okay, so we know we've got a front flag. It's another little bowl, down breeze out of the lie. It's not spinning out of the rough and it's downhill. So. Downhills, it's 155 meters. <sighs> it lies taking 10%, so it jumps back up to basically a, like a 170 with no spin downhill downwind. I really want to try and carry my golf ball to the front of the green and let it chase on up in this situation here. On a downslope, out of the rough, it's going to come out low and hunting. So there's no point trying to hit something high. So my carry distance really is closer to 150 than anything else for what I want. So 150 for me, I could absolutely pump an 8-iron out of there and take long out of play. 7-iron will get me to the middle of the green. But if I hit a soft 7, I'm taking spin off it. And in a rough lie, taking spin off it is never always a good idea. Um, take spin off it, it's just going to fall out of the sky. So I'm going to take the shorter club. I'm going to take the, the 5. Um, might not get there. I mean, I'm gonna take the eight. It's a very little club to go that far out of the rough. But I just feel like out of this lie, the way I'm swinging it, I can be really confident with this. And if it ends up anywhere, it's just gonna be just short of the green with the backstop there. No problems at all. Yeah, cool. So I like my target, just left center, just left edge of that, of the flag stick and then just run through my normal routine, play, try and play my normal fly to draw. Yes, every shot has a shot shape in mind. And just let it go. Cool, was it gonna draw off that lie? Oh, is that enough carry? All the questions, set, set. Oh, that went miles. Okay, so that was a classic jumper out of the rough. Spinning in 7,000 out of that rough, it was only spinning at 5.5 five downwind it went. So lucky I took the shorter club of the two. Not a bad miss, as it turns out, chipping back up the green. Again, if I was doing a playing lesson or on-course lesson, the option here is always gonna be a chip and a run. Why? Because we've got 20 odd meters of green to work with. We are only two meters off the green. Real life, I would probably pull out my 58 
and just hit a low pitch up there. Why? Because for me, I have, I unfortunately grew up around the greens with the lobby, so you get used to that feel. So what are we gonna do here, guys? Let's play the shot that you would suggest people play. Let's go eight iron. Why not eight? Eight, nine iron, wedge. They're all gonna come out, especially the modern wedge, come out low and running. I only need to carry the golf ball probably three meters, and then it's gonna run all the way out there. That's my idea anyways, let's give it a nudge. So I've only got to carry it effectively just to the base of the screen there and it's going to run the rest of the way quite happily with this club. Hopefully. Go. Wow. I can't ever remember going birdie, birdie, birdie for a start. When you have a good start, one of the most important things to do is be nice to yourself and say, that's like me. Tap yourself on the back. Because sometimes when you get a bad start, your subconscious will kick in and say, oh, you're, you're better than this and you'll play great. When you get to a good start, sometimes you'll be overwhelmed with how well you're playing and then you'll subordinate your own performance and beat yourself up. So, I mean, that's an amazing start. Clearly motivated by you guys. Um, it is what it is. Okay, next off. Into the breeze. Flag is front right. So a good leave is going to be middle of the green. But yeah, leaving it short right. Probably looks like it's a bit of a false front. There's a trap there, trap there. So if I can start my golf ball just the right of the golf hole and move it to the middle of the green, happy days. Uh, 170 down, so it's 165 kind of where I'm looking, into the breeze. It's a bit gusty, so again, 170 probably. So I think if I hit like a 170 shot, starting at the middle of the green, falling to the middle, I'll be happy. So 170, so that's gonna be a, a rip seven iron out of, my, out of my shoes, or just a nice flighted six. So the nice flighted six is definitely the better option. Especially just middle of the green from this distance, anything on the putting surface is pretty damn good. It's fine, the golf ball, that's a good one there. And uh, run the routine as always. Like I said, looking to start it at the right center of the green and just move it to the middle. If the flag was there, where it is, great. If Honestly, if the flag was front right, I'd do the same shot. If the flag was back left, I'd do the same shot. Just always looking to give yourself an opportunity playing to your strengths. If the flag was back right, I wouldn't be shooting at it. I'd just be playing to the middle of the green. Yeah, so I'm looking to carry this one. A 170 carry. And the wind and the elevation should do the rest for me. Face first as always. Feet. Touch high on the face, but the shot shape should be good. Is the number good? Oh, it's actually pretty close to the middle, isn't it? Cool, super happy with that. Middle of the green, pff, no problems. Now obviously we've got auto putt, so I don't get to putt that. Would I hold a 15 footer? Uh, probably not. <laughs> but in all reality, middle of the green on that hole, fantastic. Did my routine as good as I can, hit the great shot, no problems. All right. Time for one more hole. And then hopefully a whole bunch of feedback from you guys. That's what I'm after for this one. Okay, interesting golf hole here. OB down the left. Cool, great little hole here. So we've got a dog leg left to right. You can see the fence there, chilling out through the trees. Wow, what a cool little golf hole. Excellent, and then the pin is, we've got easy pins. We should have put the pins on hard so we'd have more discussion about where to leave it, where not to leave it. Because if the pin's just in the middle, let's just head it to the middle of the green and we're making birdie all the time. You need to adjust that for next time. So anyways, we go here. I could easily hit six iron down there, five iron down there, and leave myself a wedge in. Um, is it any, what's my shot pattern with driver? I've got quite a bit of room. Now if the OB was to the right, I would be like, mm, driver might not be the play. If the pin was in the front, driver might not be the play. The pin's in the middle, driver's not bad, 
at that carry distance that I have, there's quite a bit of room to the right. The hole's asking for a fade. If this was a left, if this was a right to left hole, it'd be a different story. I'd hit the fairway wood down there or a hybrid or a five iron. This hole is left to right. I'm hitting driver pretty good as you can see. The only little adjustment I'll make to reduce the chances of it going over the left hand side of the fence is I'll tee it up as far left as I possibly can. So it's giving me more, <laughs> it's pretty close left, isn't it? It's giving me more angle away from the OB fence and I'll aim left. So if I hit it dead straight at my normal, what would be 250 carry and chase out. If I hit it dead straight, it's gonna end up there. Plenty of green to work with still to middle flag. If it was a left flag, again, different strategy. But here on that line, if it fades a little bit, great. If not, it's still okay. Because of the way I've set it up and my intent and my swing, chances of the golf ball going to the left, extremely minimal. Again, if this hole was curving the opposite direction, then we'd have a very different strategy. But because of the way this is laid out, I feel pretty comfortable banging my driver down there. Even with that, and the wind also is right, right to left. Everything's asking me to hit a nice fade. Make sure the body's loosened up. Okay. Let's be positive, let's be aggressive, and let's really trust the swing. Full routine as always. Face first, feet to the face. Cool, this is the stock little fade. Not out of the middle of the bat, felt a bit funky, but pretty good, domey flight. Very good miss. Yeah, hit that one quite bad. <laughs> Just fell out of the sky, falling, rolling back. Okay, yeah, what a cool little golf hole. Pretty good outcome there. Yeah, just went nowhere. Just fell out of the sky with that miss hit high in the face. Is what it is. Happy as with that. Up that hill, not a problem. Now I've left myself a 27 meter pitch. As you can see here, flags in the middle. This is where if I'd hit, the fin was in the front here somewhere and I hit driver, man, it's such a tough shot. I'd have to be so talented to pull it off. Whereas here I've still got 10 meters of green to work with on that line. That's a lot of green to work with. Um, you can see here the green's pretty damn flat. Wants to fall to the left, so I can just hit it up to the right here, carry it around, somewhere around. Oh, you gotta think, you gotta carry it probably 20. It's probably gonna run out seven meters. So I'm gonna aim touch right there. Pull out my, uh, my faithful 58. Play a nice flighted pitch. Hopefully the last shot I hit today. <laughs> and let's see if we're any good. Lies perfect, uphill three meters. So like a low 20 meter pitch. I'm gonna move the ball a little further forward so it comes out nice and soft. Again, I know that this is 30, so I'm gonna probably feel somewhere in here for 23 meters, just that feeling with my hands. You'll always find yourself loading the club more than what you feel. And then because I'm hitting a high soft one, my brain will automatically make a bunch of adjustments with swing length. But is it just, you've got to have reference points. If you don't have any reference points, you're kind of just shooting in the dark. Okay, let's carry this one 23 meters and uh, let it do its thing. Pretty good, felt. No spin. 25 minutes of carry. Now, am I disappointed? Eh, nah. Carried at 23. Hit the shot I wanted to hit. Just didn't get enough spin on that. Maybe because I drove it too close to the green. Pretty happy with that shot though. You just move on. Obviously, auto part, you know, you might hold that 12 footer coming back down the hill. You might not. All right. I have to go and do some other stuff. But please let me know if this is in any way beneficial in this format. Um, if there's any questions you have about it, if there's any particular types of holes or shots or scenarios you want me to recreate, because I can recreate everything in here. I can go find the golf course too, but you can literally recreate everything here, types of shots, types of scenarios, strategy. 
um, yeah, just please let me know and then uh, we can have that discussion and see what we can learn. Thank you so much for your time and please, some feedback. Thanks guys.